Well, we are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much for joining us this Tuesday afternoon. We are so thrilled to get to talk to you all today a little bit about how to be successful in your in your college journeys, particularly as it relates to academics um, here at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, we know many of you might might be committed to OU and we're so excited for that and some of you might still be deciding. So we are eager to help answer any questions you have as you navigate that college search process. I'll get started with an introduction. My name is Marissa Henderson. I work here in the Office of Admissions and Recruitment. I'm calling you live today, broadcasting from my house. Um, I live in Norman, work here on our Norman office. I serve as our Associate Director of Campus Experience. I also have the honor of getting to teach college freshmen in our first year foundations course as an instructor for our leadership section. And I'm joined today by a close friend and colleague named Taylor Boyd, and I'll let you, her introduce herself real quick now too. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Taylor Boyd, and I am the Persistence Coordinator in the Graduation and Persistence Support Office. And so I also teach first year foundations and have been an academic advisor at the university as well as an academic life coach. So I have a lot of academic experience uh, working with first year students, and I'm excited to get to chat with you guys today. Yeah, so Taylor and I get to brainstorm how to best help the students that we serve, um, not only in the prospective student process, but also here on our on our current student side as well. So we're we're, we're curious, you know, what what questions you might have about college success. So we have the chat open. We also have a team of other staff members from our Office of Admissions and Recruitment who are available to answer any questions you have about OU in general. Um, so they're going to be monitoring the chat as well. If Taylor and I don't get to answer your questions uh, during the web webinar here today. So feel free to post any questions you have. Um, you can direct it towards the host and panelists. You can you can share it with others. Um, but we, we want to help you in this process. And so we're going to jump right in. This presentation is called Navigating the Journey to Academic Success um, because it is a journey. Uh, if you all have made it this far, you know, getting close to graduating high school, you know, um, sometimes success doesn't always come easy and there are often challenges in the way. And so we're going to help you best prepare for setting yourself up for success as you prepare for college and then once you get started here and you're taking and enrolling in classes as well. So I'm going to get my uh, clicker here to work <laughs> so we can get started. The first thing I wanted to start with is just kind of the purpose of the University of Oklahoma, why we exist as an institution. The mission of the University of Oklahoma is to provide the best possible ex education experience for our students through excellence um, in teaching, research, creativity, and creative activity and service to state and society. And that's what we're all about here at the University of Oklahoma. So you're gonna be a part of a classroom experience. You're gonna be able to conduct research. You're gonna be a part of, of being a part of something bigger than yourself. Our students are others minded. They care about uh, giving back and leaving a legacy behind as well. But really, you know, we're not just here to hand out degrees. We're here to do so much more than that as an institution. Your professors who are teaching you care so much more um, beyond just, you know, giving good grades in their classroom. They want to develop students who become critical thinkers, who um, understand and care about what they're they're studying, um, people who care enough to, you know, look into giving back and research and contributing to that creative activity, building new knowledge together. And so that's really what we stand for as a university and why we're here talking to you today, because it's something you're probably interested in as well with your many interests and talents um, as well. Feel free to post in the chat what you're interested in majoring in. We think that's exciting to learn where you might be um, having academic interests early on in the journey. And with that, I did just want to um, start with why. This is something I encourage students freshman year, their first day of classes, I ask them to write down on a note card what their goals are for that semester and for four to six years from then when they're hopefully graduating. What is your why behind why you're going to college or why you're thinking about going to college? Everyone needs to kind of start with this idea of why you're doing it, because inevitably you're going to spend a lot of time filling out applications, applying for scholarships, studying, uh, doing some group projects, um, going to professor office hours, which we're going to plug here throughout today. Um, but you build this why, this, this light at the end of the tunnel, as I like to call it, because you're going to need that motivation to drive you towards success. It's going to be something you're going to remind yourself often when you have those late nights of studying. You're like, oh, why am I doing this? I have to get up early tomorrow for this exam. You have to remember that why throughout your journey to help motivate you and keep you going. And it's really critical to, to envision your success, to create those goals so that you can continue on as well. I see so many great majors coming through. Um, thank you for sharing those. We have a lot of great programs here on campus, and we're going to hopefully help you find success in those programs as well throughout your time today. And I'm going to let Taylor talk a little bit more about what success might look like for you. 
Yeah, so whenever a student is coming to OU, we always want to kind of define what success looks like. And so uh, whether you put it in the chat or just kind of think about it in your head, uh, what does success look like for you? Okay, I see lots of good responses, a good balance of everything, um, being happy with whatever we decide to do in life, being happy, being able to love what you do as a career, um, achieving goals you set for yourself, those are all really great answers. And so um, we love this graphic for a picture of what success looks like because what we envision success to look like today is probably going to change and it's going to ebb and flow over the next few years um, and that's both negative and, and positive sometimes change happens for the best um, and so I like the little squiggle for success because that's kind of really going to be what it looks like there's going to be days where you feel like you're killing it and there's going to be days where you feel like maybe you're just not killing it at all um, and so I like this graphic because it does show um, success as a process overall and so um a lot of times there's going to be unexpected things but it's really just uh, making sure that you kind of define success for yourself and that you're following your journey yeah <clears throat> and something we want to share too to kind of motivate you our presentation is not going to solely focus on study skills and um life hacks um so to speak about how to you know get the best grade in your class um, but we really want to help you build a mindset of success and an idea that success is a mindset how you approach obstacles how you approach challenges is really going to be critical um, for your ability to persist in college i love that taylor's job is literally a persistence coordinator because she gets to help students during these times um, throughout college and there's a quote um, written by um Theodore Roosevelt, and I want to read it over you really quick, um, just to kind of provide some motivation that I'll analyze why I shared it with you. It's from, um, it's called Dare Greatly. It's not the critic who counts, nor the man who points out how the strong man or woman, or however you identify, stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there's no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends themselves in a worthy cause, who at least who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst if they fail at least fails while daring greatly so that their place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat and something about this that sticks out to me is is the credit belongs to the person who is actually in the arena who's trying who's who's giving it their all who who you know knows neither defeat nor victory, right? Because they're just trying. And I think that's a lot about what college is, is giving it your best effort. And that is what we hope you find in success is that you're giving it your best shot and trying as best as you can. Um, and daring great really while you do it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of courage and bravery to show up to your first college class when you've never done that before. Um, but it's it's spinning yourself in a worthy cause by trying. And I hope that you know that. I hope that your parents or your supporters will know that you're here and you're trying. Um, maybe, maybe because there might be obstacles and roadblocks that come along your way. And so we're gonna help you kind of develop this mindset of what success can look like for you um, by starting with talking through how you can take ownership of your experience in college. Okay, thank you, Marissa. Um, so like Marissa said, um, we're going to chat about taking ownership of your academic journey. And so one of the most important things that a student realizes whenever they're entering into the college um, experience is that it is your academic journey. It's not our families. It's not our friends. It's not anybody else's. It's definitely only yours. And so there's a lot of learning on how to take accountability in that um, because it, a lot of times we've had a lot of cheerleaders and people helping us navigate things throughout um, high school. But in college, while we still will have those supporters, um, it's still going to just be us going to class and it's going to be just you kind of making those decisions. And so there's a really big difference between high school and college. Um, in high school, there was a lot of teacher led learning, whereas in college, it's all gonna be student led. Um, there's a big difference between being dependent on a teacher for them to tell you, you know, what homework is going to be due next week, what reading to do next week, versus in college, it may just be you're handed a syllabus on the first day, and you have to really keep up with um, those assignments from from day to day. 
Um, and then in high school, a lot of classroom learning happened um, while you were present in the classroom. You were sitting there in the seat, kind of taking it all in. And then in college, a lot of the learning is going to happen outside of the classroom. And so there are some big changes um, that we have to take in order to accommodate those ch um, challenges and making sure that our learning styles are going For to me. kind of adapt. Um, our next slide is talking more a little about taking ownership of your learning. And so there is a quote by W.B. Yates that I use in my first year foundations class that talks about how um, education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. And so a lot of times students come to college thinking that they're going to be credentialed and that they are uh, going to walk away from OU with this degree and they're going to get a fantastic job. But a lot of it is going to be more uh, about what you put into it because you're going to put in or get out what you put in. Um, and so it is important that you are not only uh, being an active learner, but you're going to participate in um, organizations and uh, make lots of friends and uh, be a part of things that are bigger than yourself. And so let me see what else I've missed out on. Sorry, I got kicked off of the webinar. You're fine. Working from home is always a challenge. You never know if your internet's going to kick you off or not. I apologize, everyone. Should I go to and the next slide? Or uh, Finally, just one more thing that I think I forgot to mention on this slide was um, just accountability wise. Um, you are going to be responsible for yourself. Uh, especially the first semester, it's, it's a challenge um, to remind yourself to go to bed at an appropriate time and wake up at an appropriate time and sometimes say no when all of your friends are asking you to go places and you've got a big test and you're like, well, I'd really like to go someplace, but I guess I'll stay home and study instead. And so accountability is, is really um, a big thing that to really start thinking about over the next few months. All right, and so something else that happens for many students, something that I struggled with as a student in college, I was a first generation college student and did not know what I was getting myself into. And then I still struggle with as an adult, I think we all do, um, is this idea of imposter syndrome. Has anyone ever heard of this before um, in your own life? I didn't know what to name it until I was in, in grad school learning about it. But it's this idea that whenever you step into a space, you kind of look around and maybe the things you're hearing, you feel like, oh no, maybe I don't actually belong here after all. You feel a sense of inadequacy. And this is something that many college students feel. I actually, the second week into classes, I'll typically ask all of my students to put their heads down and I'll ask them to raise their hand and share how many of them have felt at certain times that they feel like they're, they, they don't have what it takes. They don't feel cut out. Maybe it's overwhelming. They all raise their hand. And I, I ask them to, to look up and, and know that it's not a feeling that only they struggle with. It's something we all feel just because it's new and you haven't quite figured it out yet. And maybe don't know what support exists. Um, so know that this is a very real feeling. It's these kind of thoughts of, I still can't believe you're letting me do this. It's only a matter of time till they find out. I can speak from behalf of OU admissions. We personally vet students to um, be a part of the University of Oklahoma. And we wouldn't admit you if we didn't believe that you can find success here. And so um, know that you, you have everything it takes to be successful here at the University of Oklahoma um, in college. And we believe in you. We wanna provide support to help you do that. Uh, but sometimes you can feel like it's a lonely world and you're like, am I the only one who's overwhelmed? Um, but I encourage you to ask a friend, say like, hey, did this make sense to you? Do you feel a little overwhelmed? And no doubt they're going to say, yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> uh, so know that there, this feeling exists and there's um, people here to help you through the process. And that's a really huge part of the college success journey and finding success in the classroom is building a team of support. Um, if, if any of us look back on our time in college as alumni, we would say it's the people that got us through. It's the network of support that we built. Um, that starts with your admissions counselor. It starts with the team of people in, in our office of admissions. It starts with the um, financial advisors, your OU money coach who might be helping you along the way. And then the academic advisors that you meet when you come for your new sooner orientation. It's building a network of support. It's your RAs. It is um, 
your your faculty members. It's it's your instructors like uh, Taylor and I. We teach first year foundations classes. Um, it's a smaller classroom, um, no more than 21 students in our classes. And on the first day of classes, I tell them I'm your go-to grown up, right? I want you to have someone that you can trust, who can write your recommendation letter, who can be the person who answers those tough questions you have. And so you have that support here. It's important to find that community. Sometimes that involves stepping outside of your residence hall and, and, and meeting someone, asking questions, maybe looking over to someone in your class and saying like, hey, do you mind if I grab your, your phone number? I'd love to meet up with you and study sometimes outside of class. Uh, going to our involvement fairs, which are many at the beginning of school, just, just finding things to do. And, and something great that I encourage you to say to someone is just like, hey, do you want to do this together? And the power of doing something together can really help. Um, hey, I'm going to the, to the writing center. Do you want to go with me? Do you want to do this together? Um, makes it super easy to want to, to do those hard things sometimes. And so finding your community is so important. And with that, finding people you can turn to for advice. Mentors are so important. And when I was in grad school, like I said, I was like imposter, should, imposter syndrome. Like this is huge. This is something I felt I still deal with. And then I learned about theory behind mentorship. And I was like, I knew this was important. And so something that I found in some of my research was how important mentorship is when it's not only just someone who's who's your yes person that just says like, yeah, yeah, you should do that. It's someone who's going to challenge you and support you. That's what a mentor is. And that's what distinguishes kind of friends from, from mentors. Someone who's going to be like, push back a little bit, you know, sometimes tell you the hard truths. Mentors can be upperclassmen. They can be people like your RA. You can even develop a you know professional relationship with your um, academic advisor, your professors who can be mentors for you um, in whatever capacity. Your admissions counselor can be someone you go back to to, to ask some life advice on. Um, but these are people you look to. I put some photos on here personally from me. This is I built this presentation, and these are some people um, who mentored me, met with me throughout my entire time in college. Um, my friends who became mentors, people I still seek advice from people who helped me get launched into my career, my grad school advisor, um, not to go into, you know, whole full life story here about my, my personal journey, but mentors are so important and key. And I can tell you, there's probably lots of alumni too, who are interested in being mentors. So if you don't know how to get connected to a mentor, um, we'd love to help give you some advice on that because it, it can really help you find success. And sometimes the questions you might be asking them are like, Hey, what classes should I take? What are good professors that you enjoy taking classes with, or how did you find success? Success in this, this tough class, uh, but mentors can really help you in that journey as well. Right, so uh, next slide talks about growth mindset and uh, obstacles in college are going to be inevitable. We're all gonna face um, challenges and obstacles. And so it's really kind of growth mindset gets into the uh, talking about how are we going to use the obstacles as an opportunity or are we going to use them as setbacks? And so. Um, whenever we are thinking about growth mindset, um, it's important to know how to face the obstacles that we are going to have. Um, and so Marissa, will you go to the next slide on some examples of growth mindset? I like this one because it talks about how um, instead of saying, I'm not good at this, maybe saying, what am I missing? Um, a lot of times I have students who come up and they're like, oh my gosh, Miss Boyd, I hate math. I'm terrible at math. Math is the worst. And so instead of always having that mindset, thinking a little bit more of like, okay, how can I make math more fun today? How can I make math suck a little bit less today for me? Um, and I realize that not all obstacles are as easy to just overcome as just a mindset. Um, there are systems that are set up in place that make that challenging for everyone. And so I don't want you to think that every single obstacle you face is just easily solvable with a positive attitude and chronic optimism. Um, but I do think that it is important to go into college knowing how to face our obstacles and kind of turning those into learning opportunities. Absolutely. Well, something else, if I were to like boil down to talking to a student and I only had five minutes with them and I was like, here's the synopsis of success, I would talk to them about growth mindset and grit. It has two very important factors in how you overcome obstacles and the things that, that come your way. Um, something, I don't know if you've ever heard the word grit before. It's one of those words you're like, yeah, I know what that means, but you probably couldn't really define. Um, grit is something that's so imperative to your success and it's not necessarily something you ever think about exercising that skill of becoming more gritty. Um, you're like, does that mean you're dirty? No. Um, being able to become gritty is kind of this, uh, this passion and perseverance towards achieving long-term goals. 
completing a college degree is a long-term goal, right? It's not going to happen overnight. It doesn't just happen in one semester. It happens in a culmination of multiple semesters. And something that um, Angela Duckworth, if you have uh, if you ever hear about grit, you're probably going to hear about um, a, a researcher, social psychologist, Angela Duckworth. She has some great videos, a great little TED talk. I encourage you to watch. It's fairly short. She's uh, researched a lot about grit, and she even has looked at cadets at West Point um, to research, you know, what makes people stick with hard things, right? Like what makes a cadet go through boot camp? And um, they look at, you know, your your strengths, your your intelligence, your your talents, your aptitude. Um, but that is not always the best predictor for a student's success. Um, what they did is they did surveys of cadets to see, you know, to gauge those things. But the leading most um, helpful predictor in the students, uh, cadets' ability to finish was their grit scale, how gritty they were, how willing they were to stick with hard with um, the times when the going got tough, right? Because inevitably it's going to get tough, right? You're thinking about military training. Um, and so she's become um, creating more research. There's a whole book on grit. But this idea that if you are willing to stick with, with hard things, um, to develop passion and perseverance for those hard things. Um, not saying that college is just an incredibly hard thing. There's a lot of sweetness in college too. I don't want you to hear me say that, but I do just want you to think about this idea of growing grit, growing in this ability to stick with things um, over time. And some of the ways that you can personally grow grit is one by pursuing your interests. Pursue the things that matter to you. It's definitely going to be hard to stick with your with it with something if you're not pursuing something you care about. This might be related to you know pursuing the right major. Um, if you start with something and you're like, this is not what I thought it would be. This is not exactly what I hope for in a career. You can change your mind. A lot of students do, and so sticking with something that interests you is important. Practice. It does not. This is where um did my screen go away again can you still see my my presentation everything's falling apart for me so i'm glad it did my screen went black but we're good um practicing and this is where growth mindsets comes in being able to go back when something gets tough and saying like you know what? i can get better i can grow um connecting to a higher purpose this is that why why are you doing this what are you fighting for right is it to help cure cancer is it to help something bigger um, to make a global impact right those things are important cultivating hope that light at the end of the tunnel um, having something you care about is so important and surrounding yourself with gritty people um, being around others who also care about the growth um, and sticking with hard things not people who quit right easily you want to be around others who care um, in that as well. And this is kind of this idea of willpower, like sticking with hard things when things get tough, because inevitably you're gonna get stressed, right? You're gonna have a week where there's finals and you have multiple exams at one time. For some reason, faculty just know like, hey, it's midterms, we're all gonna do, make assignments do at the same time. Um, and just so you know, midterms typically fall around OU Texas. So you're like, I don't have the time for this. I wanna go to this fun football game with my friends. Um, so cultivating willpower, how do you do this when things get, get you know, challenging? Many college students will feel anxious, tired, and stressed at some point in their college experience. You know, continuing on in a pandemic can be challenging too. Um, fighting through, you know, personal um, personal problems and issues can always impact your education as well. Um, and so, how do you combat this? Like, right? I'll be anxious. I'll be stressed. I might feel overwhelmed. How do I keep going? Um, there are three things you can do that I think can really help. One is continue to feel gratitude. Your brain cannot process gratitude and despair at the same time, like anxiety and stress. If you start making a list of some things that you're grateful for, or think about those things once a day, it'll bring you out of that brain of like, ah, I'm so stressed to be like, ah, you know what? You know, this is, this is a blessing. This is good. I'm grateful for this. Um, compassion, doing something kind for someone else can kind of put you into perspective as well and help you go. And you're like, I'm supposed to be learning about study skills. She's telling me to do something kind for someone. I think it can help you be successful. Um, and a sense of pride, right? Feeling like I'm an OU student. I'm with these other students. We're all working towards this, you know, go to a, go to a sporting event. Sometimes that sense of pride will really help you be like, all right, I'm going to go back and study. I got this. I can do this. Um, you can do hard things, uh, but we wanted to help prepare you for that perspective because we know Challenges will come. How do you cultivate willpower? How do you keep going in that? Um, some few other tips, and we'll knock through some study skills as well. Your key to success is time management. I can't tell you how many papers I read from my first semester students that are just like, my time management, man, I just can't figure it out. It's your first time being independent. You're not, you don't have a structure of a day as you would maybe in high school um, where you're you're back to back in classes and you have sports and then you have after school activities. You're on your own and determining your schedule. 
So that puts the power in your hands. Um, I talk about using the margin in your day, using the small hours, the gaps between classes to go knock out a few study hours at the library. Go be somewhere productive. If you're a commuter student driving to campus, treat your, your day on campus like a work day. Be there from eight to five. And in those hours in between classes, go and study so that you can go home and not have to worry as much about, about classes and studying. Um, these are a few other tips, right? Going to class. <laughs> Simple thing, we can just say that, go to class. It'll help you so much more because you're gonna be learning and paying attention. We'll talk to you about where you sit in class that matters. Um, but think about your semester strategically, right? Don't overwhelm your schedule. You work with your academic advisors on this on all of your challenging classes in the same semester. Um, space them out a little bit, right? If you know like you're not as strong in your sciences, don't take two science classes in one semester. Um, treating school day as a work day. I put in just one bullet point, sleep is important. Sleep is like the most important. It helps you, um, helps your brain process information, memorize information. It helps with your immunity as you're trying to combat sicknesses in college. Um, health and wellness as a whole. So self-care, making sure if you need help, um, professional or non, you're getting it. Um, we really care about this as a university and our, our faculty will talk about it. And so we want you to take advantage of it. The margin, you know, the white space on your calendar, using that wisely, although it's so tempting to go take a nap. I think my freshman year, I watched all of Friends and this was before that. I mean, maybe Netflix was a thing, but I had DVDs. I watched, I put every DVD in. I got through that season. I mean, the whole series, it was great, but I could have probably used that time a little bit more wisely, but you can reward yourself, right? You can say, I'm going to do this, then I'll get to watch my, my favorite show or get my episodes in. Um, and make smart choices about going home and staying on campus. It's very easy to want to go home, if, especially if you will feel homesick at some point. But being on campus helps you see what other college students are doing, making friends, building that community, finding mentors, and also being able to prioritize, you know, like, hey, all my roommates are studying, maybe I should study too. Um, that can help create those, those healthy behaviors of studying as well. A few study skills I'm going to go into before we share specific resources on our campus that will help you in this process. Um, as you, you're like, all right, I'm going to study. And that's like a, a very ambiguous word. What is studying anyways, right? Studying is kind of whatever you define it to be. It might be working on an assignment. It might be setting up your calendar for the week. It might be actually reading content or looking up videos to help you further understand something online, listening to, to lectures you've cre recorded. But go with a plan before you just put two hours of studying on your calendar, because I can guarantee you'll spend an hour and a half um, walking, finding a spot to study, talking to a friend about how their weekend was and then creating like by the time you get to your homework, your study time's up and you have to go grab dinner or something. So create a plan, develop a strategy and know what you're getting yourself into. So the moment you get there, you can be ready to go and utilize that time well and know where you're gonna go to that matters. And there's a lot of great spots on campus. You might be a coffee shop person. You may be someone who can study in your room. That takes a special person who can, you know, not be tempted by their bed to go take a nap. Um, utilize your peers and your professor. There are people in your class for a reason. You are learning this together. Find a study group, teach one another, review content together. Go talk to your professor. As scary as it sounds, they care about you and they don't just have office hours for themselves. They do it for students. They want to get to know you. And that can really help build that, that relationship, asking questions. And sometimes it might just be like, hey, I've, I've been coming to class. I've been listening and taking notes. I didn't do too well on my exam. Do you mind looking through this with me and tell me what I might be missing? Simple. They're going to be like, oh, this is absolutely, I want you to succeed. Uh, and determining your learning style. Not everyone learns best listening to a lecture. Not everyone learns best um, reading from a textbook, right? You might need videos and visuals and your professor may not be giving that. So you may need to go then and complement some of what you're learning in the classroom with things like YouTube videos, right? TikTok probably has something out there. I follow TikTok by like the human anatomy. There's a bunch of cadavers they show. Not something I was into in school, but I've learned a thing or two about the human body and it's fascinating. So I bet there's resources out there. Absolutely. Um, okay, let me continue on. Study skills. This is a list of a variety you might use. If it works for you, do it, right? If there's something you've done in the past in high school, or maybe you don't know what works for you, like you will not be judged for making flashcards. That is not just the thing you do. <laughs> you know, maybe in like middle school, you people make flashcards. I'm a big mnemonic device person, so I will make up songs about anything, right? Um, I'll use the acronym so I can remember a process, so I can write a paper on it, and then I'll go, as soon as the test starts, I'll like write out my weird little song I wrote up, I made up in my head, just for me, but you know, it did the trick. Um, mind maps, reading things aloud, creating practice tests, and use 
online resources. Like I said, there's probably a TikTok to help you further learn about psychology or something that you're doing in class. Take advantage of what's out there. And it's changed even from when Taylor and I were in school too. And we're not that old, right? Just kidding. We don't, we barely, we don't make TikToks. We watch them. <laughs> we're not that savvy yet. Um, but there are a lot of things. We don't want to spend our whole presentations being like, here's study skills, right? We want to help you know that like, these are great things to do. Do what works for you, do it. But the chances of you probably not doing too well on your first test is pretty high because every college student's figuring it out. You will be in good company. Everyone else will figure it out. And then you'll be like, okay, now I figured out my professor and how they ask questions. Now I know how to go back, how to listen better, how to revisit things. And I know what resources to use. And that if I'm not good does at first doesn't mean I'm never going to be good. Um, that's a part of that growth mindset that's important. All right. I did mention where you sit matters. I think so, at least. Um, one, because if you're in a larger class, OU's average classroom size, 32 students in your classes, only 4% of our classes are the 100 plus um, person um, classes. And those may be things like your, your intro to biology, intro to psychology classes your freshman year. A lot of those classes may have uh, discussion sections or labs broken down later in the week. So if you're in a bigger class and you're sitting in the back, I'm someone who's very distracted by people. I would be like looking at everyone's computer and be like, oh, they're on Facebook, Facebook's not y'all's thing. It was my thing in college, <laughs> right? I'd be distracted by, oh, they're watching ESPN. What's the score? Um, that I think sitting towards the front can be helpful because then you're making better eye contact with that faculty member. I also think that faculty member is going to see you when they're like, that person comes to class every day. They came into my office hours. They have what, an 89.4? Maybe I'll just give them an A, right? So I'm not saying that always happens, but it, it helps build your case. There's also, um, I think, you know, if you're looking at a light bulb a particular way when they're talking about something and then you're taking the test, you look at that light bulb, be like, oh yeah, I remember that was, that was it. Um, I think it's important going and sitting, kind of building that routine for yourself, helping yourself learn in a particular environment is, is, is helpful. Doesn't mean it works for everyone, but I think it's helpful. Office hours, I already talked about that. I can't reiterate enough. They're there for you all. Um, faculty auto you are like required to have office hours it'll be on your syllabus when they have them and a lot of times they'd be willing to meet with you outside of that as well you just have to email them develop good email etiquette with your professors um, making sure you have an introduction making sure you tell them what class you're in because a lot of times they're teaching a lot of students and asking for that help and not bugging them um, those are good skills to learn too that can only help you academically um, and taking inventory you know have a time of the week where you're looking through and seeing what all is due what all you need to be doing when your deadlines are so that something doesn't surprise you. You're always on top of it when you know what to expect there as well. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Taylor. She's gonna walk you through some resources that we have on campus as well. And we still want your questions to keep coming um, because after we go over resources, we'll open it up for you all to ask us questions as well. All right, so one of my favorite parts of OU is the amount of resources that we offer for student support. And I think that it is so important for students to realize that you don't have to do college on your own. Uh, you are coming to a university and every single person at this university is here because they want to help you succeed and ultimately get to uh, walk across the stage on graduation day. And so along the way, you're going to be able to use a lot of these resources, um, some more than others. Uh, but some of the resources that I that we want to highlight today um, are going to be these six. And so academic advisors, every single student is required to meet with an academic advisor every single semester. Um, that makes sure that you are on the right track for graduation. It also makes sure that you have a point person to ask any and all academic questions. And uh, you know, if you need to drop a class per se, or if you change your major, all of those things are all gonna be done through your academic advisor. Um, next one's going to be the Student Learning Center. Student Learning Center offers lots of different tutoring resources. Um, they also offer study skills consultation. So a lot of times a student will get to OU and be like, wait, stop. I actually don't know how to study. Um, it happens all the time. And so we will always refer them to a study skills consultation where you sit down with another student um, and they just kind of help you figure out what works best for you, kind of like those things that Marissa was talking about. Um, They're just going to help remind you of those pieces. Um, next thing is going to be the Writing Center. Uh, writing Center is a place where you can send your papers and they're going to help you proofread them. Um, they're going to help you throughout the writing process. And so it's an invaluable resource that not enough students take advantage of. Um, academic colleges, 
uh, a lot of the colleges that you're going to be a part of are going to offer different workshops and different organizations in order to um, better support their students. And so whether you have a major picked out or whether you don't, um, an academic college is going to help you um, to be their first support. Um, the OU Library uh, has lots of different resources for you available. Um, not only could you go check out a physical book, um, but they do have large online databases for research purposes for all of the papers that you're going to get to write um, in your future. And then last but not least is the Math Center. Um, one of my personal favorite resources um, because math, unfortunately, is, is not always everybody's favorite subject. And so the Math Center is there to help you um, with your homework and help answer your questions and help uh, really pass those math classes along the way. Um, some of the other resources that aren't on this page that I do want to highlight are going to be, um, Marissa might have to help me because, yeah, uh, the Accessibility and Disability Resource Center. And so if you've been receiving accommodations in high school, um, this is the office that's going to help you um, to receive accommodations in college as well. And so if you've been on a 504 and IEP, and that's something that you're wishing to continue, um, they're going to be the office that can help you with that. Um, academic life coaches, um, students have the opportunity to meet with an ACT life coach if that is something that students, um, if you're needing some support, or if you, it can be a one-time meeting, or it can be a continued meeting that you meet every two to three weeks with someone just kind of depends on what you're needing. Um, another one is going to be the Center for Major and Career Exploration. Um, a lot of times students come to college having no idea what they are going to major in and that's absolutely fine. Um, that center is going to help you kind of navigate the deciding process um, or on the back side sometimes you come to college knowing exactly what you want to do and you're like interior design yes this is what I want. And you take a few weeks of those courses and you go, oh dear, I have made a big mistake. Um, but then you don't know where to go next. And so they can help you kind of walk through that process of, hey, I used to know what I want to major in and maybe now I'm not so sure. Um, and so that's a good resource for you to kind of keep on the back burner. Uh, Marissa, can you think of any other resources that I haven't chatted about? Yeah, I, I, we can um, further emphasize a class that we teach. Um, it's called First Year Foundations. It's through our first year learning and engagement um, office. And like I said, we it's a small uh, cohort of students, only about 21 students max will be in our classes. There's different sections that you can take, whether you're interested in like business, pre-health, there's a pre-nursing section, there's um, small town student section, there is I teach a leadership section. Um, community engagement, personality and self, academic success, um, a lot of great different sections specific. So we all cover similar content and then we focus a little bit more in different areas. Um, my class, we, uh, we, we talk a lot about resources on campus. We, uh, because it's a leadership section, they did leadership projects and we volunteered one day at the food bank on camp or the food pantry on campus. Um, so it's really fun and en engaging, um, I think, and it's a great way to kind of get your toes wet as you start college because you might be in a larger lecture hall and you're just kind of like overwhelmed, but our class is going to walk you through how to find success in that. And this, a lot of the content that you, you heard from us today is it's kind of spread out and really focused on in the semester as well, because we want to help you find success. And that's the thing I'd say overall with all of these resources, with myself, with Taylor, with our Office of Admissions and Recruitment, there's no other time in your life where you're going to have so many people on your team that are here for you. Anytime you step into any one of these offices, talk to any one of these people, we are for you and for your success. And so that's, that's it reassuring. Sometimes being for your success may, may be telling you, you know, something that's hard to hear. Uh, sometimes like, right, like we want to, we may have to encourage you to drop out of this class because you, you aren't sure if you, if it will be the best for you overall, or we might say like, Hey, it might be in, you know, worth it to consider changing your major if, if that doesn't make you happy. Um, but we want to help you and support you in that process as well. I think someone asked a question about, um, how many classes do people usually take? Do you want to handle that one, Taylor, since you're the academic yeah, advisor yeah. extraordinaire? Yeah, I was I was in the process of typing that response, so I'd much rather say it out loud. Say it out um, loud. <laughs> so generally, students are going to take between 12 and 15 hours. And so um, what that means is classes are generally going to be about three hours a piece. 
Um, if they have a lab, then they're going to run around four to five hours worth of credit. And so that doesn't mean that you're going to be sitting in a class for three full hours each day. It just means that it's going to meet for roughly three hours a week. And so for a three hour class, you're going to probably meet three days a week for one hour. And so 12 to 15 hours a semester is generally what students are taking. Yeah. Um, let me see what else. I see a question. I don't know if it's been answered or not yet. Someone had a question about housing exemption. Um, those will start being reviewed in February. And so if you have any follow-up questions about specific processes related to post admissions, you're like, hey, I have done this. I haven't heard back. Follow up with your admissions counselor. Um, at any time, we're here to help navigate and help you in that process. So if you have any further questions, maybe even after today, don't hesitate to reach out to your admissions counselor as well. Any other questions about classes, success, college, OU that we could help answer before we wrap up today? I um, can put, I don't know if my computer will let me. I'm happy to put my email in here as well. If you have any questions you'd like to reach out to us, I added in the chat um, this, what you see on the screen here as a PDF. If you wanna look into further resources, if that's something that um, excites you or, or you know, wanna make sure to bookmark for when you come to school, um, please do that. And then just something that will further elaborate on this is your new student orientation. That will happen over the summer months in, in May, June, and July. And you can start registering for your date that you will do new student orientation at the beginning of February. You have to have committed and done some mandatory uh, trainings and new student survey before you can schedule that. You may have to schedule some assessments as well if you don't have test scores, um, not to confuse you, just letting you know the process. And then you'll be scheduling a date now for when you come on campus in the summer. And that's when you actually will meet with your academic advisor and enroll in classes. I don't know if you know any more about that process, Taylor, um, since you, you've handled it in years past um, advice. Classes will start in mid-August. I don't know if we have an exact date off the top of our heads just yet for. No, I don't have a date off the top of my head. Um, I saw the question about will classes be in person? Um, classes are always, we're hoping to always have classes in person. Uh, there will always be classes offered online as well. Um, there's going to be virtual options. And so it just kind of it's up to you and what you prefer. Some students really prefer in person. Some students prefer a blended format. And so whenever you're making your schedule, we just always recommend talking to your academic advisor to make sure that they know, like, hey, I'm really wanting in person. This is what I want to focus on. So that way they can help best set up your schedule. Yes. Um, the Student Learning Center location, there is, uh, I believe, more than one location, um, some satellite offices on campus, but Wagner Hall is um, located it's near the Union on campus, and that is a great first, like, your home, academic home for your freshman year because it houses our university college, um, our first year learning and engagement, the Center for Major Exploration, Project Threshold, um, the Writing Center, a lot of resources are housed um, in that building, um, and that's where it's some of our first year foundations classes are also taught. So it's a space you might be um, occupying often. Academic advisors um, may be located in there for you as well. So um, that's a space you'll, you'll come to pass through often, and it's pretty central on campus as well to go and study at. Um, our academic calendar should be released though and available on our website soon, so you can get the specific date for um, classes starting. And then over the summer, you will get specifics on to your OU email. So start checking your OU email. You'll get information about uh, housing assignments, who you're living with, where you're living, as well as move in information because you will move in before classes start. And then um, you can, you'll, participate in orientation um, leading up to classes as well. So you'll you'll feel hopefully very comfortable with where things are on campus before a class even starts after, after you've moved in there. But that information might still be coming soon um, to you as well. Get in the habit of checking your OU email now. Um, our office is still communicating with you through your you know, prospective student email address, um, but you will start learning more from you know, financial aid, uh, from housing, sometimes through your OU email. Um, and there might be some exciting opportunities that come up as well through there. Any other questions or resources we can share with you all? Um, 
feel free to ask now. Um, if not, we will go ahead and wrap up for today. We thank you so much for attending. We have some other virtual events throughout the rest of the week. If you enjoyed this and want to join our other virtual webinar series, um, talking about a variety of different things like housing um, and support and resources and how to get involved. So you can look into exploring those. Follow up with your admissions counselor as well or, or shoot Taylor or I an email. We're always happy to help support students. Uh, maybe we'll see you in our class this fall too. Uh, we look forward to it. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to meet with us. Thank you for dealing with our technical difficulties. Um, I'm sure your professors will have technical difficulties as well. We're human here. Everybody is human, um, not held to a standard of perfection, just grace. Uh, but we hope you've learned something and will be able to challenge yourself to have a, a mentality, um, a mindset of success rather than feeling like you have to do X, Y, and Z to be successful.